Hi class, we are finishing animal characteristics today. So we're gonna watch two videos on animal, animal adaptation. So the two different categories of adaptations are physical, what an animal looks like. Um, does it have wings? Does it have feet? Does it have large eyes, small eyes, a beak? Those kinds of things, those are physical. And the behavior, kind of like if you think about your behavior chart, um, you think about, you know, did you act good? Did you act bad? Those are actions. What did you do? So what is the animal actually doing? Is it hibernating? Is it migrating? Um, things like that. So those are the two things that we're going to look at, uh, physical and behavioral. So um, let's go ahead and get the video started. After the video, though, you're going to take a little quiz on Schoology, and today your moon and weather is due. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's go to the video. To meet their basic needs, animals have developed special features called adaptations. So I also wanted to mention maybe something that helps you um, think of adaptations is aprender, like in Spanish, aprender, to learn adaptations, how the animal through time has learned how to survive in a way. It's kind of like that. The fins of fish and the flippers of underwater mammals such as dolphins and whales, help them swim and maintain their balance. Okay. Ducks, penguins, and frogs do not live in the water, but spend a lot of time in or near water. What physical adaptations do they have to help them move through water? So I want you to look at the animal and look at what you see that the animal has in common. What is similar that they all have that help them in the water? Okay, and then I am going to ask you if you've ever gone to a pool. So think about if you've ever gone to a pool. And if you've held your hands like this and you swim, and then you hold your hands like this and you swim, and you compare them, I want you to think about if you go faster or slower. So next time you go to a pool, I want you to try those two things and see what you go faster and which one goes slower. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that if you hold your hands like this and you put your fingers together, you're going to go faster because you're going to have like a cup that like helps you move through the water. And if you look at the penguin and the frog and the duck, they have these webs. So it's called web fingers. So right here, it's kind of like more together. It has more of that flesh to be able to scoop the water so that it can swim faster. They have webbed feet that help them move through water with little effort. Webbed feet also help them find food and escape when in danger. Okay, so why would you want to be able to swim fast? Well, you want to be able to get away if somebody's maybe trying to eat you. So I think that's a great reason to have that physical adaptation. Ducks and penguins are both birds, but ducks can do something penguins cannot do. They can fly. What physical adaptations do birds have for flying? We all think we know that. Birds have wings that help them fly. How does being able to fly help birds survive? So um, there's a couple different reasons why it would help a bird survive. So go ahead and think about it for a moment and then I'm gonna play the video and see if you got the Answers right. Wings help birds find shelter and escape from danger. They also help them in finding food and water. Some animals that live on land have hooves. Hooves help animals such as mountain goats and elks walk easily on rocky or hard ground. Giraffes and horses also have hooves that protect their feet and help them run fast. Okay, so we did a little activity on Wednesday um, where you match the feet with the, with the, the footprint, right? The, the different, the, the limbs, the legs with the footprint. Um, so different animals have different 
um, limbs because they live in different places. Animals like squirrels climb trees to find shelter and to escape danger. They have very sharp nails called claws on their feet that help them climb. Badgers use their sharp claws to burrow in the ground for shelter. Body covering is another physical adaptation. It plays an important role in protection. Let us look at how body coverings help these animals. Mammals have fur or hair to keep them warm. A polar bear has a thick white fur coat to keep it warm in the cold Arctic. What kind of body covering do birds have? Think about it and we're gonna see. Birds have feathers covering their bodies. Feathers protect birds from seasonal changes. What type of body covering do these animals have? So birds have feathers, these have different coverings. Lizards, turtles, crocodiles, and snakes have rough, dry scales for protection. Scales also help animals like snakes to move. Look at these animals. They have different physical adaptations for getting and eating their food. Bears, lions, and cheetahs use their sharp claws to catch and tear the flesh of other animals. Their sharp teeth help them to eat meat. Plant-eating animals have flat, scissor-like teeth to chop grass and leaves. So if you look at your own teeth, most of your teeth are flat because we mostly eat vegetables. We do, we did develop um, some sharp teeth so we could eat meat too, but fun fact, we humans, our early stage of humans, um, we were actually herbivores. We did not eat any meat at first and then plants became more sparse and we started to eat some more meat. So um, that is how we eventually changed, aprendimos um, uh, through time to, we evolved to have more uh, of the carnivorous teeth. The claws of hawks and eagles are called talons. They are used to catch and eat small animals. Hawks and eagles do not have teeth, but have sharp beaks that they use to tear meat. Other birds, such as macaws and some finches, use their large beaks that are shaped like nutcrackers to crack open nuts. Physical adaptations are features that help animals meet their basic needs in their environments. Physical adaptations increase an animal's chances of survival. Okay, so that is the whole idea. Your physical adaptation, your behavioral adaptation is so that it, you can survive. It is to help you survive. So let's watch the last one. And that one was physical. The what does it look like? And this one is behavior. Oh, what does it act like? A rattlesnake uses the rattle on the tip of its tail to produce a rattling sound when threatened. So the rattle is physical, but it is doing something, so that is a behavior. A skunk stamps its front feet, raises its tail, and sprays a bad-smelling liquid to escape from danger. Unlike the skunk, an opossum plays dead when in danger. An opossum bares its teeth, produces saliva, and secretes a foul-smelling liquid to mimic a dead or sick animal. Wow, so he pretends like he's dead already so that an animal 
um, won't come and eat it because the animal, other animal's going to think, oh, he's sick. I don't want to eat something that's sick. Do you want to eat um, some bad pizza that's been out for days and smelling bad? No, you probably don't. And so other animals aren't going to want to eat the possum either if he is making a stinky, smelly smell. And that's its behavior, what it's doing so that it can survive. A behavior or action that increases an animal's chances of survival is called a behavioral adaptation. Behavioral adaptations also help animals meet their basic needs in their environments. Animals like the chimpanzees live in communities. This helps them groom each other and protects them from other animals like leopards. The polar bear and the arctic fox take very long naps during the cold winter months. This is called hibernation. So hibernating is the behavior they have in common, but actually if you look at the picture that they're showing, they have a physical characteristic in common, a physical adaptation. Um, and I'll let you think about it. They both have fur that is white and they both live in the Arctic, the Arctic where it's cold and there's a lot of snow. And so if they're white, they're able to hide. It's called camouflage and that makes them safe from predators and it makes it better for the polar bear to hunt because then the other animals aren't gonna see it coming. It's gonna be able to hide and it can pop out out of nowhere and be able to catch its prey. Some birds, such as the Canadian geese, move to warmer places in the south during the cold winter months. This is called migration. Behavioral adaptations help animals meet their basic needs in their environments. So if you don't have basic needs, you can't survive. Behavioral adaptations increase an animal's chances of survival. So basically all of it's about surviving. If you don't have basic needs, you're gonna survive and if you can't get away from predators, you're not gonna survive. So all of the things that we talked about today um, are all about how does an animal survive? Um, and before you take that quiz, I want you to think about and be very careful with the words on the quiz. So I'm going to give you a hint. If it says, why does the tiger have striped fur? It says stripes. It does not just say fur. So is this, are the stripes important to keep it warm or maybe to keep it hidden and camouflaged? So just think about those small things um, and be careful when you take the quiz. Big thing I wanted to remind you of, because we are not doing a great job at this yet, um, you guys really, really need to try harder. If you want that ice cream that me and Miss Maylove said we're gonna give you, remember, if you want the ice cream, you're gonna have to go to Schoology and you're gonna have to turn in your weather, week four, right here, week four weather data collection. You're gonna click on it and you're gonna submit it. Right here where it says submissions, you're gonna have a submit button. The people from last week in my homeroom, I'm not gonna go over this so it doesn't take very long, but see, I can see only three people in my class are even gonna get an ice cream right now. And there they are because they turned in. Um, I mean, not for sure because they haven't finished this week, but I mean, everybody else didn't turn that in so they're not gonna be able to get that. Please remember to turn in your weather and your moon Here's the moon too. Let's see who turned that in. Oh, a lot more people turned in the moon. Good job. All right. So I wanted to say that. Here's where you're going to take your quiz. You're in your science. You're going to go to animal characteristics. You're going to go to week four. And you're going to, oh, it's hidden. Maybe I put in the other one. Sorry, guys. Um, you're going to go to animal characteristics. You're going to go to week four. And you're going to go to Friday. And on Friday, you're gonna click on, click on the animal characteristics quiz. You're gonna, we're gonna preview it just so that you see what it looks like. Okay, and here you go. That's what you're gonna do. At the end, you're gonna have a matching one and you're gonna drag it to the correct definition. So it says what an organism must have in order to survive. 
you know this. Is it physical characteristic, behavior, basic needs, or animal? You guys can do this. You're going to go to review when you're done, and you're going to go to finish, close. Okay? So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you. I miss you. Um, and uh, hopefully, if you watched this and you came to the Zoom, thank you for coming to the Zoom. If you watched it and we haven't had the Zoom yet, come to the Zoom, 10 o'clock. Okay? Bye.